Okay, my friends, I, this is Brian Forrester, a very, very good guy. He goes all over the world, and he's trying to f discover what is going on. Why are these ancient constructions better than the new constructions? And I have some offer stuff to offer, and I, I, I don't think he appreciates my poking around in his stuff, but I'm using it under the fair use, which is legal. I can, I can use his works to, to present my evidence to support my side of, you know, free expression. So I'm not like, taking anything away from Brian. I'm just saying I think it's time to consider my point of view. Now, watch what he has to say about these ancient constructions. Because it's the same thing happened at, at um, Stonehenge, and I'll explain that in a minute, too. And the same thing at Baalbek. Listen. Stone is granite, and it's not local. It comes from across the valley and up the side of a mountain, which we'll see. Mm -hmm. That's all right, you hear what he's saying? It's not local. It's Now, why wouldn't it be local? Does it have to come from that area? It's the same material as the other area, but I can tell you what, it's biological, and it's just as the thing is Stonehenge is, and I will show you that. That's the quarry site. The little flecks of white that you see in the stone is quartz. Mm -hmm. So it's highly piezoelectric, and so this stone was selected specifically to construct the Great Sun Temple, which we'll see up there. Some First of all, it wasn't, you know, th th that's the kind of assumptions that you make based on, I don't know what, what to be perfectly honest with you, but I wouldn't go that way because I know what, what it is. It's just nucleophilically substituted and the quartz invaded the spaces that were in where there was pockets in, in the fleshy areas. Some of those blocks are 40 tons plus. Um, and the conventional story is that the Inca were building the Sun Temple and then for some mysterious reason abandoned the construction. But I think there was a massive cataclysm sure. that destroyed it. And so some of these multi-ton blocks like this one tumbled down from the top to the present location. And the Inca who adopted this site couldn't use stone like this, so that's why it's been sitting like this for probably thousands of years. Amazing. The Inca built the entire network of other uh, terraces and things around the Sun Temple. But we'll see very obviously that uh, Inca construction is very different and, I have to say, inferior to the work of the megalithic builders, yeah. which is what that whole area is up there. All right, that, that's the key right there. The megalithic, ancient, ancient stuff, where, where they had all those molded walls down in Peru and all that stuff, the gigantic blocks, huge, and just fit together so perfectly, and then you end up with these scraps, and, and, and it's, this is much later construction. He's correct. He knows what he's talking about, but what we need to do is look at the biology of it, and I'm going to explain to you, and, and Brian, I, I, I mean no disrespect whatsoever, my friend, and I know how you've been treated by the academics, and I am in the same boat, or, and, you know, and I don't listen to them anymore. I go my own way, and I think about what the reality of the situation is. I, I, they have left my realm, to be perfectly honest with you. All right, we can easily tell if this stuff is biological or not. And, and you can see by the look of it, it looks like a foot. Well, you can also see at the tips of the toes, there is these little holes. That's the terminal distal end of the, the toes. And that's where the blood circulates back, the, the vein and the artery are at the tips. And they are obviously separated. This is a, where there's a blood supply that feeds the the whole web of the feet and draws it back up. That is the vein side of the return, which is the black blood. You will see this type of fibers wherever there is literally skin and the outside surfaces and, and the membranes are, this is a heavy dense fabric because it's a lung. And this has been DNA tested, cat skin, the whole nine yards. This is a human lung. And it was from the flood. All of that fabric there is is protected it. That's called fascia. Well, pleura in a lung. But anyway, we're going to be looking at this in the microscope. 
of course you've seen my goose Caesar here there's his feathers it's exactly the same fabric it's it's uh, collagens and carriages and keratin and then inside is where you get your basalts and so forth because all that is is the coating and if you know how to look at this and you put a little water on it you can see the actual neck where the neck was there it died laying like this and the neck snapped right off and that same thing flat on one side because of the flood and this side is just a regular goose and then I have all kinds of things here to show the anchor balls and tendons and so forth. We're talking about some gigantic, gigantic, gigantic creatures. Not little puppies. These things were big. Now, the point I'm making about this heel stone, and they call it the heel stone. <laughs> this is at Stonehenge. It's way down the road. And there was another one. They called it the twin. And it's some, I don't know whatever they did with it, but it's been gone. But there was another place right next to this. That's the guy's feet. And the stones at Stonehenge, I can show you, and I have seen them. Now, I haven't been there myself and seen them, but I have seen pictures of them up close. And you can see the fabric, the exact same fabric. And I will show you in the microscope in a second. Well, let me show you right now. You have to turn the lights off so you can see it. Hold on. We turn the light of the microscope on, and then we shall see what we shall see. All right? You see that? That's the fabric. Let me see if I can get a little better, clearer. All right, that's the fabric of that lung, which they call pleura fascia. It, it can do this. It can move and stretch and pull, and all these little straps. You can see blood all over the place, the red blood and the black blood. And then there's a lot of little quartz crystals here and there, too, um, which quartz fills in all the voids. Hold on a second. All right, sarsen stone is this kind of stone right here, basically. You see this? Sar sarsen stone. And look at this. It's all the moss and then lichen. I always talk about the red blood is the moss, the black blood is the lichen. And that's what happens in fingers and, and toes. One side is flush with artery blood, and the other side is black vein blood. And this is what sarsen stones look like. Yeah, that have this mottled looking effect because there's a lot of fabric on it. And, and this is a noto. This is a noto from my collection. All right, it's a new species that nobody's ever seen before. And that's where the blood comes down to service the toes, which are inside. And this is not this is not a shoe. This is this is the foot of the creature. There's this arch, and here's where the the nubs hit the ground here, over here, and over here, and there's the arch, just like ours. And it has springs inside. You see this here? These are springs inside here. They, they don't have tendons, and we have them in eroded conditions. Now, you can't probably see that, but there was a heelish bone in here. You might be able to see it, I doubt it. Because what happens is the inside turns to um, um, basalts or limestone. It depends on what it was in. Or they, sometimes they look like what they call rose-colored granites. That's not, that, that was an organ of some sort. And I believe it was a, 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 li a liver. And this was, I believe, was a lung. And that's why it has those different colored red bloody spots. And I have another one over here I know was along, this one here. And you can see, if you can see the, the little pockets of red blood in there, I don't know if you can or not. But that was a, a, a lung, and when I cut it open, you could see that there was still, wherever the, these little pockets are, that's where the blood ran up against these holes which are normally filled with air and now they're filled with with different colored crystals because that's what happens the crystals are what they call seeds the seeds of the metals begin to grow to the same color they attach to the same types of metals because metals are, are in the blood transition metals I, there is a, a lot to this but it's not all that complicated the key i want you to take away from this 
is that there was all kinds of creatures on the earth and they, they refused to examine them because they're just too spectacular for them to you know consider they just won't consider it, 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 it like this gigantic toe and everything at, at heels at uh, Stonehenge is from a giant they they took the body parts and if you come up look, looking close at this you're gonna see all that fabric that I showed you this fabric stuff will be all over that because everywhere there was a membrane or a layer of skin you're gonna see this even on my buddy Caesar the geek goose let's take a look at him under the microscope Okay, I got Caesar under the microscope. Now, here he is up here. This is the tip of his beak. Now, this is going to be hard to focus because I'm doing it by hand, freehand here. But you see all these little white flakes and the black and the brownish looking things? This is the tip of his beak. But the outside of everything, your skin, feathers, hair, everything has this same looking structure to it because it's it's carriages and collagens and fibers and and um, it is where your body meets the rest of the world I'm going all the way down his back this is all the way down his back and then eventually I'm going to hit to the end and there it is the end of his back right there and now if I turn it over I'm going to try to do this all so you can see where I'm at now I'm underneath whoops I gotta go there it is right there. All right, that's the basalt that's inside. Let me see if I can adjust this up a little bit. All right, you see that? Totally different. That's inside. Outside is the feldspar. See it? I go down into his, his neck, and here's his neck. And those are little tiny holes in there. All right, that, that's, originally that was his neck where his throat was. And right up here, that's an artery. <laughs> that's an artery. I scraped some of the blood out of there just to take a quick look at it in a microscope. It's just, it's just an artery. All right. So when they say, "Oh, that's got basalt," and see, this was the vein. Uh, um, maybe that one was a vein side, and this is the artery. I don't know. I can't remember. But. You can see the fabric, and then when you get inside, it's totally different. So when they start talking about granites and so forth, I got to be honest with you, just they, they don't know what they're talking about. They're, 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 they're relating one type of a stone like it had to be some just gigantic formation. This is the noto, and that's the fabric on, on the noto. Watch, I come up real close. Let's see what we're going to see. You see, that is exactly the same as on my belt. I show my belt a, a zillion times. Let me turn this down a little bit. <laughs> it's just like my belt. Because it's, it's nothing more than like a leathery material over the top of this foot. And here's what we were just looking at right there. Now I'm going to get my belt and show you what that looks like. Don't forget though, this is what it looks like up here. All right. See that stuff? Hold on a second. Okay, this is the foot. All right, now that's the surface of the skin, the leather of the foot. And that's what it will be, leather. All right, so that was what we were looking at right there, and there it is there. Now, let me show you my belt, and a leather has to be flexible. It has to be able to bend and move. Every one of these little things has straps. You can't really see them all that well because it's been so well-aged, but my belt is not well-aged, but you can see virtually the same thing. All right, this is what a leather belt looks like up close and personal. This thing's kind of old. Yes, it is. Now, this allows the belt to move and, to, and all that and there's a ton of these little black balls and then there's a ton of little straps now you can't see it on this side because this is the process of tanning makes it hard to see this side you can see them very easily see this this is the underneath side 
Now, all of those little fabric-y looking things are the same fabric-y looking things that you see right there at Stonehenge on their stones. And you can go up and look at them and look at them closely, up close. Okay, now I'm going to show you why leather is so flexible. You see right there? That's one of my belt loops. You see all the fibers? Every one of those fibers is attached to an anchor ball. You see those little black balls? Every one of those has a, has a, a fiber attached. That's why they're flexible. People have been sending me things saying, there's stones that are flexible. Well, yeah, they are stones that are made from fascia just like this, and they still have a bit of moisture in them, and then you can move them. They're still they're stone, yes, but they're movable because of all the fibers that are in there. These don't just snap and break. Those are tough as hell. And as you can see, remember, this proves all my claims. First of all, we have the foot right here, the no-toe. I showed you the other stuff, all the fascia and feldspar is nothing but skin and fabric of living creatures. The moss grows on one side, the lichen grows on the other. Artery blood, vein blood, just two different states of oxygen. This is what a toe looks like or a fingertip, one or the other, they, they're somewhat similar. And the no toe, I mean the... Um, heel stone, which is sarsen stone, and all this is sarsen stone. It didn't come from 25 miles away, which they claim. It, the guy died on the spot, that's all. And then all of the really fleshy stuff erodes away. Then you get these wrapped up organs. You get organs that are wrapped with the fascia. Like, um, oh, wherever it went, my, uh, here it is. Like the um, lungs and the kidneys and the heart and liver and all of those things are wrapped up in a special fascia of their own to protect them inside your body kids are separated when you die and all the interstitial fluidy stuff dissolves and turns into mud you end up with these organs that right there is a uh, is a lung that's a lung and there's <laughs> there's the entry big and this is a lung too it depends on how they get they get petrified in what kind of conditions they were in when they were like this one ate right into it if we had, had to be in some salts or acids or bile or something this was in a different condition and that's where the entryway was and I have them bigger I have them smaller I got all kinds of things and I have them in every single different state of, of decomp decomposition so take it from there and we got to really start looking at this in, in a whole new way of geobiology because that's exactly what it is and they were giants on the earth in those days we need to re-examine all that stuff too